2020 has been a crazy year for everyone involved, and it's also taken its toll on the space industry. The pandemic saw investment in spaceflight fall by about 20%, and we've also seen a disproportionate impact on those space companies that depend on tourism revenue for a lot of their money. I'm looking at you, Boeing and Virgin Galactic. So this year hasn't been great for a lot of people, but it's also been pretty good to a lot of space companies. I mean, SpaceX had its Demo 2 and Crew 1 missions, which were a huge success and finally gave America a human spaceflight capability that it's been lacking for so many years. It's also progressed with its Starship testing program, and it also received 40% of the NSSL award, which is huge for enmeshing SpaceX in the national security complex, while also ensuring that the Falcon 9 and Heavy continue to receive missions all through the 2020s. Rocket Lab also had a roller coaster of a year. They had their first failure of their Electron rocket on their 13th mission, but they aced the return to flight and even brought back a booster from space as a neat little treat. Rocket Lab is one of my favorite space companies, and I know they're going to have a great 2021. Astra also had a very difficult year. After two rocket failures, they managed to have a fairly successful third flight that positions them perfectly for a orbital flight that will make them only the third private company to reach orbit. Now, one of the most successful parties this year hasn't been an American or Western-based company, but it's actually been China and their aerospace program. They launched their first ever Mars probe, the Tianwen-1, which is due to arrive in February. They also launched their new Long March 8, which is their attempt at a reusable launch vehicle. Although I will admit, recovering three cores at once is kind of a funky way to do it. They also completed their Baidu GPS program, which is a huge step for self-sustainability, and they're really positioning themselves to be a superpower in space. They've also had their wildly successful Chang'e program, which is responsible for the blockbuster Chang'e 5 launch and recovery, which gave China the capability to return moon samples. Russia, on the other hand, has been doing well with what they've got. What they've got is a failing space program with a not very imaginative engineer corps. They've managed to bring the Angara back to flight after a five-year absence, and they've stayed dependable, which is as much as you can ask for a space program running on fumes and past glories. Speaking of dependability and past glories, ULA has positioned themselves to stay at least relevant in the next decade with their NSSL award and the debut of the Vulcan Centaur. I'm not saying they're going to be winning any awards, but I know ULA will be there in the next 10 years. Also, Lockheed Martin has been doing some funky stuff with the acquisition of Aerojet Rocketdyne, and while the deal was almost certainly driven by Aerojet Rocketdyne's hypersonics portfolio and defense capabilities, part of me really hopes Lockheed Martin is getting serious about space. Now that I think we've done enough of a recap, let's start looking at what we can look forward to in 2021. First off is more Starship testing, SN9 is already on the stand after its little tumble, And SpaceX seems really confident with how this is going to go. I mean, after seeing just how close they got with SN8, I'm actually feeling kind of hopeful for this next one. Who knows, maybe they'll surprise us. They're also planning for super heavy hops later on in the year, Elon Musk said in the next few months. So hopefully, maybe we'll see a full stack by the end of the year. They're also planning on continuing their Starlink rollout with more launches and more availability as the year goes on. And of course, another blockbuster year for their workhorse, the Falcon 9. One of the first things we'll have to look forward to in 2021 is the return to flight mission for the Launcher 1. It hopes to offer orbit-capable small sat launch capability from anywhere in the world. Now while that's cool and all, they've sunk a ton of money into this. So if it doesn't succeed on its second flight, I think we're going to see a lot of people reconsidering their options at Virgin Orbit. Next comes a startup a lot of people really haven't paid a lot of attention to. It's Firefly, and their launch vehicle, the Firefly Alpha, is on deck in January to be launching a payload out of Vandenberg. 
it's got a thousand kilogram payload, which is actually pretty big and is almost in a niche of its own. I'm really curious to see where this goes, and I wish them the best of luck. Now in February, we're going to see the arrival of the Mars Convoy. We're going to see probes from the UAE, China, and the Perseverance rover, all arriving within days of each other. And I'm going to have fun reliving the memories of watching Curiosity Land almost six years ago. South Korea is also looking to join the Orbital Launch Club with their Nuri rocket, their first indigenously produced space vehicle, and I say as long as the Koreas are using rockets to launch into space and not at each other, it's a win for everyone. Now March is going to see the launch of two competing capsules. Starliner's return to flight mission is going to be another unmanned test flight after their debacle in 2019. Hopefully, everything goes well, but the day after, we're going to see SpaceX's Crew-2 mission. It's going to be almost comical seeing Starliner launching another test flight while SpaceX is already in business launching Crew to the ISS at regular intervals. Speaking of SpaceX, they're also planning on two Falcon Heavy launches for the U.S. Space Force. Since we didn't get any Falcon Heavy launches in 2020, I'll definitely be heading up to the Cape to check these out in person. That brings us to October, when I think 2021 is really going to heat up in space. It's going to kick off on October 1st with the Russian launch of the Luna 25. That's right, you heard it, Luna. Russia's decided that China shouldn't be the only one having fun up there. So Russia's going to be sending a mission to the south pole of the moon. I'm really glad to see this is happening, because only a couple of weeks later... The U.S. is going to be launching a mission to the moon under the Commercial Lunar Payload Services contract. This mission is going to be launched by the Falcon 9, and it's going to include a rover and a lander. Hopefully, 2021 is the year we see a return to Beyond Earth Orbit missions becoming a regular occurrence for both NASA, Russia, and China. Now, on that topic, we're going to be seeing the SLS program finally, hopefully, maybe get off the ground with the Artemis 1 mission. Now, I don't really have high hopes for the SLS making this deadline. It's been having problems with the green run, so I wouldn't get too attached to an SLS launch in 2021, but if it does happen, it'll be one hell of a treat. I don't even know how long I've been waiting for the SLS. I remember going to space camp back in 2012, and they were telling us that maybe in 2016 we'd be seeing a moon mission. And now, almost 10 years later, it still hasn't happened. And with the HLS funding being the way it is, I don't think we're going to be even seeing a 2024 moon landing. But that's besides the point. Speaking of delays, the James Webb Space Telescope is another one that's set to launch in 2021. I mean, this one's been another delay magnet that's just been postponed after postponed. I'm sure you guys have all seen the XKCD comic that uh, illustrates this perfectly. So there you are, two missions in 2021. That probably won't happen, but if they do, they'll be one hell of a treat. Also, the Vulcan Centaur is going to be launching in Q4 of 2021. I've already made a video about this, all the missions it's going to carry, and then an analysis on why it's going to be a pretty successful launch vehicle. So if you want to check that out, check that out right here. Also, Axiom Space is going to be launching three customers on a Crew Dragon mission to the ISS. This is going to be SpaceX's first commercial manned spaceflight mission, so I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's a great way to commercialize space, although the tickets are really hefty. There's also been chatter about Tom Cruise filming a movie aboard the ISS with seats bought on Dragon, but until we get a really solid deadline for that, I'm not going to speculate. 2021 is looking like it's going to hold a lot of promise for spaceflight and space fans, and the fourth quarter of 2021 looks like it's going to be insane. I mean, we might have SLS, James Webb, moon missions, and full-stack starship hops. I mean, just contrasting this with the news of a couple years ago, where the only real thing on the headlines was SLS delays and something coming out of a new startup called SpaceX, I think the space industry has come a long way in a really short time. The 2020s really look like they're going to be what the 1960s were. What's important is that this time, we're not being led by four-year administrations and mixed policy messages like we were in the 70s. 
This time, it's being led by private space companies with profit motives and investor accountability. There's real reason to be hopeful about 2021. And just on a quick note, I want to thank all of you who've subscribed. It really is humbling that 160 people would care to hear what I have to say about spaceflight. And I want to wish all of you and your families a happy New Year's. This is Cost Plus Content, signing off.